The buildings we build are the connective tissue that makes us a nation. It's impossible to make a building without having it mean something. The one constancy is the federal government. Working together, we uncover what the goals are and we share authorship. What is the face, what is the character of a public building in America today? Just to know that the government actually cares is really important. On June 1, 1962, the course of federal architecture was altered. Buried in a detailed report on the urgent need for new federal buildings by President Kennedy's Ad Hoc Committee on Federal Office Space was a seemingly benign page titled, Guiding Principles for Federal Architecture. Penned by Daniel Patrick Moynihan, then a young assistant to the Secretary of Labor, the guiding principles were meant to raise the quality of new federal buildings by creating architecture that resonated with all Americans and provided enriching civic spaces. Everybody wanted another building. I was assigned to do work at this by uh, Secretary Goldberg, and we thought, well, why not, as we set about this new building boom, why don't we put some structures in there, some guidelines about what these buildings should look like. So I wrote a little one-page guidelines for federal architecture. Guiding Principles for Federal Architecture. In the course of its consideration of the general subject of federal office space, the committee has given some thought to the need for a set of principles which will guide the government in the choice of design for federal buildings. The committee takes it to be a matter of general understanding that the economy and suitability of federal office space derive directly from the architectural design. The belief that good design is optional or in some way separate from the question of the provision of office space itself does not bear scrutiny and in fact invites the least efficient use of public money. The design of federal office buildings, particularly those to be located in the nation's capital, must meet a twofold requirement. First, it must provide efficient and economical facilities for the use of government agencies. Second, it must provide the visual testimony to the dignity, enterprise, vigor, and stability of the American government. It should be our object to meet the test of Pericles' evocation to the Athenians, which the president commended to the Massachusetts legislature in his address of January 9th, 1961. We do not imitate, for we are a model to others. The committee is also of the opinion that the federal government, no less than other public and private organizations concerned with the construction of new buildings, should take advantage of the increasingly fruitful collaboration between architecture and the fine arts. With these objects in view, the committee recommends a three-point architectural policy for the federal government. One, the policy shall be to provide requisite and adequate facilities in architectural style and form which is distinguished and which will reflect the dignity, enterprise, vigor, and stability of the American national government. Major emphasis should be placed on the choice of designs that embody the finest contemporary American architectural thought. Specific attention should be paid to the possibilities of incorporating into such designs qualities which reflect the regional architectural traditions of that part of the nation in which buildings are located. Where appropriate, fine art should be incorporated in the designs with emphasis on the work of living American artists. Designs shall adhere to sound construction practice and utilize materials, methods, and equipment of proven dependability. Buildings shall be economical to build, operate, and maintain, and should be accessible to the handicapped. Two, the development of an official style must be avoided. Design must flow from the architectural profession to the government, and not vice versa. The government should be willing to pay some additional costs to avoid excessive uniformity in design of federal buildings. 
Competitions for the design of federal buildings may be held where appropriate. The advice of distinguished architects ought to, as a rule, be sought prior to the award of important design contracts. Three, the choice and development of the building site should be considered the first step of the design process. This choice should be made in cooperation with local agencies. Special attention should be paid to the general ensemble of streets and public places of which federal buildings will form a part. Where possible, buildings should be located so as to permit a generous development of landscape. Hello, I am Luke Russert. I have fond memories of Senator Moynihan, both as my father's good friend and mentor, but also as someone who sought to find the worth and value in both sides of every issue. The guiding principles for federal architecture are still relevant half a century later. They advocate for authentic expression by our nation's most talented architects and artists, universal accessibility, sound, cost-effective construction and operation, and a positive, engaging presence in the communities in which government facilities are located. Public buildings, as well as monuments, landscapes, and infrastructure, play a special role in society. They give visual form and bear witness to the values and aspirations of a society and its members. Underlying the principles is the premise that public works in our nation should not simply reveal, but also infuse democratic values. Clearly, it's important that government delivers services to the public. At the same time, it's impossible to make a building without having it mean something about the relationship of the people to the government of the United States. You have to find a way um, to you know, address the question of what the, what the building means and what it says, because it will affect everybody working in the building, and it'll affect everybody that comes to the building. In an open and democratic society where economics and politics and a variety of other circumstances wax and wane, the one constancy is the federal government. For the senator to have the understanding that architecture could convey not the power of the federal government, but the power of our system that says that these buildings should actually be transparent and open and of their day is of tremendous historical consequence. In word and spirit, the guiding principles have profoundly impacted federal investments in architecture and design. They guided redevelopment of historic Pennsylvania Avenue in the nation's capital, turning America's decaying ceremonial Main Street into a lively urban destination for living, working, and entertainment. They underpin modern landmarks from the Federal Center in Chicago, designed by Mies van der Rohe, to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory's new Net Zero Research Support Facility in Golden, Colorado. I think a lot of the success of really good architecture has to be about everybody sharing a common goal, being able to communicate or identify what the goal is. It's not that the goal is obvious ever in the beginning, but working together, we uncover what the goals are and we share authorship. The principles have endured because dedicated public employees have applied them to achieve the mission and goals of their specific agencies. Citizens, designers, and civil servants alike can ensure the principles continue to longevity by interpreting their meaning for a changing society. The federal government must be responsible to contemporary society and the demographics of our society. It's a very different problem than it was 100 years ago. What is the face, what is the character of a public building in America today? I mean, I think it's a big question. What is it supposed to look like? What it, how does it fit into its community? How, how does it push back at its community? Transformations taking place today, and those we cannot yet foresee will inspire new ways to embody American ingenuity and purpose. Like America's foundational documents, the guiding principles for federal architecture are adaptable to address these changes. It's brilliantly written and should be read more often and should be understood by the public even better. I think just to know that the government actually cares, our government is actually taking steps to implement these things is really important. It's a great moment to revisit it and I think it should be 
a, a national discussion amongst all of us that care deeply about the principles that he's set forward. Each one of us, you, I, everyone, has a responsibility to, to make sure that the built environment is as beautiful, as, as efficient, as, uh, as functional, and as representative of our culture as it can be. Architecture is one of the most visible and enduring ways the government can represent its values across time. The guiding principles codified the high standards that federal architecture has sought to achieve since the nation's founding. But the challenge and the ultimate responsibility for designers and public officials alike remains the same now as it's always been, to continually and clearly evaluate our work for the American people. Continued excellence in architecture and design is a way to show that the federal government aims high, that its citizens deserve the best, and that the public realm matters.